A 20-year study of thousands of American women has found seven healthy habits and lifestyle factors could reduce the risk of dementia. Joining us live from Boston is Pamela Rist. She is an associate epidemiologist from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Pamela, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for staying up late to speak with us. It sounds like an extensive <laughs> study. Tell us a bit more about how the habits of these women were tracked over the past couple of decades. Yeah, so the study that we use, as you mentioned, is one of those long-term cohort studies. So when the women were enrolled and they were in their mid-50s, we asked them about lifestyle habits. What's your diet like? How much do you exercise? Do you smoke? And then we also asked about other biometrics. What's your height and weight? What's your cholesterol? Do you have hypertension? So we asked it at baseline and then again 10 years later, so when they were in their mid-60s. And we found at both time points, it lowered their risk of dementia if they had these healthy habits. And we assessed dementia about 15 to 25 years after we first assessed those healthy habits. And so what was the outcome? What are the healthy habits we should all be taking note of? Yeah, so there's there's seven of them uh, that the American Heart Association first developed as a measure of cardiovascular health, and now we're realizing they're also great for brain health as well. So we're talking about not smoking, being physically active, eating a healthy diet, making sure that you have un that you have low blood pressure, so that you don't have hypertension, not having diabetes, not smoking. And I feel like, and also your cholesterol levels, <laughs> that you have healthy cholesterol okay. levels as well. So when we talk about being active and eating a better diet, do, did you drill down into exactly what that means? How much exercise per day, for example, would be beneficial? Yeah, so for us, we said that you needed 150 minutes of moderate activity per week or 75 minutes per week of vis vigorous activity. So things like running, for example, versus more moderate could just be brisk walking. For a healthy diet, there were a few different factors that we looked at. So having four or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day, keeping your sodium levels on the lower side, not consuming too many sugar-sweetened beverages, eating whole grains, and then also eating fish as well. So a few different factors. So Dr. Rist, how early can dementia begin in the brain before diagnosis? And how early should we all be making those sort of lifestyle changes in order to improve our odds? That's a great question. So we now think that the pathology or the changes that eventually result in dementia that occur in your brain can happen decades before. Uh, so in some ways, I think part of why we did this study was to show that even doing things in your late 40s and early 50s can influence your risk of dementia in your 70s or 80s. And I think as more and more people do this, we'll start looking at even younger ages. So do lifestyle habits in your 30s matter, for example. So what was the rate of people you followed who actually developed dementia? And more broadly, are more people getting dementia now? Or is it just that we're diagnosing more cases and and probably have an aging population in the mix as well. Yeah, so in our population, about 13% of the women developed dementia. So we had about 14,000 people, about 13%. So I believe we're looking around 1,800 cases or so. Uh, in terms of the increasing sort of dementia incidence or prevalence that we're seeing over time, I think both of the factors that you mentioned, there's a growing awareness around dementia and things to look for. So we're definitely diagnosing more. Then we also know that we have an aging population as well. And then there are also other factors, like the factors that we looked at in this study, things like obesity or hypertension. The prevalence of those factors has also been increasing, which may further contribute to the increasing rates of dementia. Now, you tracked women, but is it fair to assume that men would also benefit from the sort of lifestyle changes you're talking about? I think so. Based on some of the prior research, most of the prior studies enrolled both men and women. But we know that women sometimes have different risk factors for cardiovascular disease as well as for dementia. So for us, we just wanted to sort of make sure in a large population of women, do we see the same things that they've seen in combination in studies that enrolled both men and women? And for this study, did you look at how much of a factor genetics might be if someone might be predisposed to dementia if they had it in their family? And, and do we know much about that these days? 
That's actually the next phase of this study is to add that in. We do have genetic information on some of these women. So we'll look at how things like APOE, one of the big genetic risk factors, might modify the association between these healthy habits and dementia risk. 